If you wanna see how we make some crazy custom distro plates for our Aorus water-cooled PC, then stick around. G'day guys, my name is Corey and I run the Designs by Fire YouTube channel and today we're going to be working on Progress 4 for our Aorus water-cooled PC. Today in particular, we're going to be creating and manufacturing our own distro plate for this build. Now personally, this is actually a new skill that we have learnt only this year. We've only done it about three times so far, so it's still fairly new to me, but we are trying to perfect the process. At the moment, I'm not really good with finishing passes. However, we do have the distro plate down packed. So we'll create one of those today, show you guys how we do it and how we get it all together. Now guys, while you're here, don't forget to hit that like button, leave a comment down below and hit that subscribe button for me. Let's get right into it. So when it comes to planning these custom distros, personally, I like to start in Adobe Illustrator. Um, I always like to leave at least three centimeters from the edge. I can go to two centimeters if I really want to. Um, and that's just to allow for your pathing, for your O-ring and your screws as well. Now I use Illustrator because I feel like it's easier to measure out things and put them in place before you get into Fusion 360 to make it 3D. And so that's why we like to start here. Now, obviously, depending on the programs you use and what you're used to, that might be different. You could probably draw this whole thing up in Fusion 360 as well by yourself. I'm pretty sure I could do it in Fusion 360, but I can do it much faster in here just to get that 2D drawing down packed. Now, once we get into Fusion 360, which is a software I use to create the tool pathing and everything like that, I import my 2D sketch and then I'm able to extrude and thicken up the actual piece to match the thickness of the acrylic. So I've done that and then I can route out my channels and I can put the screw holes in and the O-ring hole and create different bodies. So this is the bottom body and then the top body is this one here where the screw holes go and that's also where we put our ports in the plate. So if I turn both bodies on, you guys can see that we have a 3D object right here which represents a distro plate. Now, if I go into the manufacturer screen, you guys can see that I have my tool pathing all set up and I can actually simulate that to make sure that the tool is going to go in the right direction and so that there's no mistakes with the work. So if I right click this and then I go to simulate, and then I press play, you guys can see that it'll act like the CNC machine moving just like how it would in real life. So once I set up all of my contours with the pathing, I can export the G code ready for my CNC to cut out. So let's go ahead and let's do that now. So we got the top and the bottom piece of the distro all milled out now. The only thing that went wrong during the process was the fact that the O-ring is slightly out and this is because our CNC machine is only a hobby machine so when we do our tool change it might have slightly been bumped a tiny bit but the O-ring being slightly out does not matter. This is still all gonna work perfectly fine. So now that we have our two pieces we can actually make these edges a bit smoother, get it all together. We can tap the holes, get the threading in there and get this all up and running. So let's go ahead and start on the M5 tapping of the screw holes. So 
So we've threaded all of the holes in our distro plate. Now what we have to do is create the O-rings for the O-ring channels. So I'm gonna take you guys through the process on how to do that. And believe it or not, you guys can do this from home. So the process of creating our O-ring is quite simple. I've actually got a big roll of O-ring right here. This is two millimeters in thickness and our O-ring channels are 2.1 millimeters. So it's gonna fit in nice and snug. So what we have to do is wind out as much as we need for each O-ring channel, and then we can test fit it by placing it all the way around, and then I can make a nice smooth cut where I need it and then join it together with a bit of super glue. So if I do this now, let's just hold this here, keep that nice and strong. Doesn't matter if it comes loose around the edges, I just need to make sure that it's the right size for this O-ring channel. So that's good. So I know the length I need for the two small ones, so I'll go ahead and make that cut. Try and make it as straight as you possibly can. And so that way, when you're doing the gluing, the two ends will join really nicely and create that nice seal between the two ends. So what I'm gonna do is measure out the same length for the second smaller part. Then we'll make that cut. Just trim off that excess part there. Make sure that it's nice and flat. Now when you're doing this, you typically want to use a really good grade super glue. So we've actually got the professional grade Loctite super glue, and we only need a real tiny bit to dab on one of the ends. And then what we need to do is hold this together like so until it makes that nice seal. Now try and get this as straight as you can and try and get the best seal between the two ends. So I'll grab my super glue, we'll grab a bit of Bit of it on the end, like so. You only need a tiny bit as well, not too much. And then we'll put those two ends together. So I'm just gonna lean that up like that and let that dry out for a tiny bit. We'll do the second one now. Tiny bit of super glue on the end. Join the two sides together to create the best seal possible. And then we'll let that dry out for a tiny bit. And there we go. Let's wait for those to dry for a bit and then we'll go ahead and we'll put them in the O-ring channels. So these O-rings have not been trained yet. So what I wanna to do to make it easier for us to actually get this installed is, first of all, I wanna put the joint up the top end where I know there's not gonna be a maximum amount of pressure. So if I put that up the top, I know that liquid's probably not gonna be sitting right up the top. It's gonna to be perfect, even though it won't leak, but just in case, we're gonna put that up the top and make it much easier on ourselves. Second of all, I wanna add a tiny dab of super glue just to help me sort of train this around the edges uh, because to begin with, it's gonna be hard to keep it inside of these slots here. So let's go ahead and install the O-rings into the O-ring slots. we've got all of the o-rings in place i'll give this a good wipe down before we go ahead and put our m5 screws in all of the holes i believe there is about 53 screws in total so it's going to take quite a while so sit back relax enjoy the few that i do show and we'll be right back with the finished distro And that about does it guys. We have finished our distro plate. We've fully leak tested it. We actually used the EK leak tester. This thing is such a handy tool. I recommend this to any of you guys who do water-cooled PCs. Instead of having to leak test your system for like 24 hours, you can put this on, you can wait 15 minutes to see if the um, 
pressure inside drops at all and just so handy to have one of these. So I'll leave this in the description and I'll also leave the links to the specs that this computer is gonna have as well in the description if you guys are interested. But definitely highly recommend getting one of these. So guys, now that this is finished, we can move on to Progress 5 where we will be starting to paint, I guess, and you know form up some of the aesthetics of the build. So we'll get this installed next time and we will try and get some of the painting and some cogwheels and you know try and make it a little bit more steampunkish and we'll go from there. Anyway guys, hope you all enjoyed the video. Please remember to share, like and subscribe. Leave your comments down below. What do you guys think about these progress videos? Do you like seeing how we made things like this? Let us know down below. Guys, if you would like some merch, we have links in the description. You can get awesome designs like this. Actually, Amelia made this design, which is really cool. She actually made the whole collection, which is awesome. So if you guys want to sit, you know, purchase any merch like this, the link will be in the description. You can go there and find what you like. Also, we have a Patreon and a YouTube membership. Links in the description. Helps us out a lot, especially to afford materials like this acrylic here. This acrylic costs a lot of money, especially with this thickness. So it's greatly appreciated if you can help contribute there. Anyway, guys, we'll leave it at that for today. Hope you all enjoyed and we'll see you all in the next one.